Chapter 2, Atoms, Molecules, and Ions. Start out here a little history. Put some uh, faces to these names. In the upper right corner, we see this guy working with a cathode ray tube right here. That is J.J. Thompson. Um, down here, hopefully we recognize this gentleman, Albert Einstein. We have Robert Milliken. Over here, one of J.J. Thompson's students. This is Ernest Rutherford, who's on the 100, the New Zealand $100 bill. Each New Zealand dollar is about 65 cents U.S. And finally, over here, this uh, good-looking Russian gentleman is Mendeleev, who we know came up with the uh, periodic table. All right, the atom. We're not going to get into too much history um, of early times. We talk about Democritus. Uh, we'll talk about him later. Instead, what's important, we're just going to know the basic, um, how an atom is set up. We have protons and neutrons in the nucleus. And then we have electrons orbiting the outside. Not in a set pattern like is shown here, but instead in this fuzzy electron cloud. So we said J.J. Thompson, he did some experiments with a cathode ray tube. Uh, he basically hooked up this cathode ray and evacuated tube with um, an electric current. Could be from a battery, could be from electricity. And what he found with a, with a fluorescent, phosphorescent background, he could see the stream of particles going from one electrode to the other. When he put a magnet up next to the electrode, or I'm sorry, next to the tube, he saw that the particles are being pulled towards the positive end of the magnet and repulsed by the negative end of the magnet. So obviously he was able to say that these are negatively charged. Um, he had a background in electromagnetics and from his background and, and the experiments he ran, he was able to determine the ratio of the electric charge to the mass of an individual electron. He didn't know how big the electrons were, but he could tell uh, from doing calculations the electrical charge to the mass, that ratio. Next came Millikan. Millikan, um, he did his oil drop experiment. And what he did is he sprayed a fine mist of oil drops. They started to fall down here. He used x-rays to produce a charge within the um, for the air molecules within there for the oxygen and the nitrogen and what that did is that charged the oil droplets by running an electric current through those through the uh, brass plates he could actually get a charged um, oil droplet to kind of float in air and depending on by varying the electrical charge on those plates he was able to determine the charge of an electron. Since you had the charge of the electron and along with J.J. Thompson's work you could figure out the mass of an electron. Very very small mass of an electron. Um, turn of the century, uh, early 1900s, late 1800s, um, radioactivity was discovered and what they looked at is they took a source of radioactivity and they ran it through, again, some charged plates. And they found three distinct rays would come off of them. They called the alpha, beta, and gamma, first three letters of the Greek alphabet. Um, so if we look here, I ask, what is the charge and relative mass of each of the types of radiation? So we have our alpha particle. Since it's being pulled towards the negatively charged plate, the alpha particle must be positively charged. The beta particle getting pulled towards the positive plate must be negatively charged and the gamma ray which just goes straight through the middle must have no charge and now how can we what can we figure about the relative masses of the types of radiation well if we think about the beta particle and the alpha particle here those got pulled but it looks like they did not get pulled to the same degree which one got pulled a lot more the beta particle all right, the beta particle got pulled a lot more off track. That means it's much lighter. So the beta particle is much smaller. The alpha particle is much bigger with the, with the electric field. It only got pulled uh, um, slightly off of uh, its direction that it was going in. All right, Ernest Rutherford came along. This is one of J.J. Thompson's students. He took a source of alpha particles. 
and fired him at some gold foil. He used gold foil because gold you could um, is very, very malleable. You can hammer it down to a very, very thin sheet. Um, very thin means a couple thousand atoms thick. At the time, they, they believed in J.J. Um, Thompson's plum pudding model. Nobody knows what plum pudding is. Uh, we could think of it as like a chocolate chip cookie model where we have our particles here. These are positively charged particles kind of in a bed or a dough of uh, negatively charged particles. There's no kind of, there's no real structure to it. There's just positives and negatives kind of mixed together. Just like a chocolate chip cookie, there's no structure. There's chocolate chips just mixed together with the dough. So what he expected to have happen when he fired these alpha particles at the thin gold foil is the particles to go through, maybe get slightly deflected, but all of them were supposed to go through. Instead, what he found were most of the particles went straight through, but some of them were deflected, and some of them were deflected at great angles. Some of them were even sent back right at the detector or right from the source he equated this to firing a gun and having it bounce off a piece of tissue paper and f have it go back at the uh, person who fired the gun so it was he was amazed there was no way to um to explain this so that meant that the plum pudding model had flaws that that is not a good model two main things came out of it first Atoms are mostly empty space, right? And we, we know that because most of those alpha particles went straight through the foil. And something like one in every 20,000 was deflected at all. So almost all of them went straight through. The second, since they were being deflected and the alpha particles are positive, there must be a small positively charged center to the nucleus. So that when the um, positive alpha particles got near, the positively charged uh, centers of these atoms, they were deflected and even deflected to a great degree. All right, here's a little table, little synopsis here. Electrons and protons, they have the same charge, just opposite. Neutrons have no charge. Um, Mass-wise, protons and neutrons are about the same mass, and electrons are very, very small. We see this times 10 to the negative 28 versus 10 to the negative 24th. It would take about almost 2,000 electrons to equal the same mass as one proton. So electrons are very, very small. 